To establish a starting point with using the Pokies 57 CNC interface, I'm going to connect one of the motors and then test it. The machine that I'm connecting this interface to uses traditional drivers rather than the Pokies step drivers. Because these drivers are so common, I wanted to connect the interface to this type of driver as this would be the most common use for it. And just so happens that the project that I'm working on uses these standard drivers. There are terminals on the driver that plug into the motor, the two coils of the motor, and there are terminals for the step pulse and the direction signal. The connector for the motor drivers will require a ribbon style connector. Each of the motor connectors have the same pin designations. There's a 5 volt pin, pin number 9, that will be connected to the positive step and direction terminals. The number 5 pin is the step pin, and the number 3 pin is the direction pin. Let's construct the cable. Since this is a 10 pin ribbon connector, this ribbon cable will have 10 wires. Cut the ribbon cable to your desired length. Grab the header that has 10 pins. Pay close attention to the notch that's on one side. You'll also need this little clamp that clamps the wires into the connector, creating a connection with each of the pins. And you'll need this part to provide strain relief to the back of the header. Insert the clamp onto the header, but do not squeeze so tight that it clamps down. Orient the header so the notch is facing in the direction shown. Insert the ribbon with this orientation. Make sure the red stripe is oriented as shown. This will designate pin number one. Insert the ribbon slightly past the back so it can be cut off later. Using standard pliers, open it to the wide position. Squeeze the assembly together so that the clamping piece clicks into place. Remove the excess ribbon using an X-Acto knife or scissors. Fold the ribbon cable around the top so it can add some strain relief. And then add the strain relief back onto the top of the clamp and push this piece in until it clicks in place. Since we only need three of the wires, I'm going to remove the majority of the wires. Using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut and peel back the unnecessary wires. Remember that wire number one has a red stripe. The wires that we're keeping are wires number three, five, and nine. I'm peeling the wires all the way back to the connector so I can remove those wires using a wire cutter. Before I cut the unnecessary wires, I want to move the wires that I want to keep out of the way so they don't get cut. Now with some standard wire cutters, I'm just going to cut off the unnecessary wires as close to the connector as possible. This is what the finished connector should look like. There should be only three wires extending from the connector. In order to insert these three wires into the terminals of the driver, the ends of these wires need to be stripped so the, the stranded portion of the wire can be exposed. Plug the ribbon cable into the motor number one position. The five volts pin is going to be connected to the CP plus and CW plus, the pulse and direction positive terminals. Since I only have one wire for this, I'm going to go ahead and jump CP plus to CW plus. Now I'll add the 5 volt wire. Since the CP plus and CW plus is jumped, it doesn't really matter which terminal you use. Tighten both of these terminals and make sure that the wires are secure by tugging on them. Now add the pin or wire number 5 to the CP minus, which is the pulse terminal. Tighten and ensure that it's a secure connection by tugging on it. Now secure the number 3 wire to the CW minus terminal, which is the direction signal terminal. Tighten the terminal and confirm it's a secure connection. I have already connected a power supply to this driver. The red wire is 36 volts positive DC and the black wire is ground or negative. The stepper motor that I'm going to be using is a NEMA 34 651 ounce inch stepper motor with four wires. This motor has two coils. The first coil is the red and green wires and the second coil is the blue and yellow wires. I'll start with the first coil, the red wire, going into A+. The second wire of the first coil, the green wire, will go into A-. 
The first wire of the second coil, the yellow wire, will go into B+. Plus, and the second wire of the last coil is the blue wire, and that's going into B-. Minus. Confirm that all the connections are secure. We are ready to plug in the interface. Insert the USB cable into the computer. Insert the other end of the USB cable into the interface. If the LEDs do not turn on, make sure that the jumper next to the USB connector is set correctly. Plug in the power supply that will power the drivers. Now we can test the motor to see if it turns. Go into Mach 3. Make sure that the Pokies plug-in is selected. Press OK. We need to go into the plug-in configuration to turn off the emergency stop notification. Click on the Pulse Engine Settings tab. We're going to trick the interface into thinking that the emergency stop is not pressed by setting the Invert Emergency Stop input. You can now click on the reset button and get out of the emergency active mode. I'm going to use the left and right arrow keys to move the x-axis motor. Repeat the same steps from this video to attach the other motor drivers and motors. Thank you for watching.